Well, hey, EVTV, here's Anna Kloppenborg with your weekly Amsterdam update. This week, no more boating. Boat shows are over and uh, Little Del Red Delta is out on the dry. That means it's car time. Uh, we have our Jeep CJ5 that I'm sitting right in front and uh, we have some updates on the CJ5 conversion. It needed a little time for this project to get going again. Why was that? Well, we had a um, pre-test done by our RDV, our local road legal organization, the friendly folks from the RDV. And while they were here, they were thoroughly impressed with all the EVTV goodies that we're using to make this Jeep an electric drive. But uh, they couldn't find the VIN number where the VIN number was supposed to be right here on the frame above the right strut. Um, that meant we had to wait for three weeks, count them, one, two, three weeks, before we could have it properly investigated by their local chapter here in Amsterdam. Uh, during that time, you're not allowed to do anything to the car, and also it's not good for the customer, because if that VIN number was not there and they would deem this car not to be original or in some way um, tampered with, there is just no way further to get this car road legal ever. ever. Um, in that case, they are a judge, jury, and executioner, and uh, there is no <laughs> higher authority. There is no way to recoup on your investment, uh, and you basically write off the car. That meant that for the customer, uh, it was clear that we had to uh, stop all work and all further costs going into this vehicle to make sure that uh, it would have a certain future. Well, last Thursday, it was able to go through uh, this originality testing, the echtheidsonderzoek, the realness, um, <laughs> what we call that echtheidsonderzoek, would be the realness uh, investigation. <laughs> and it was deemed to be real. Uh, the previous owner that uh, our customer bought this CJ5 from was such an enthusiastic, restoration-minded kind of guy that he just uh, putty filled everything up on the frame and had it completely powder coated in a candy apple red and then did the chassis in yellow. But actually the VIN number was still under there. Uh, it would have made no sense for this car to have been either a stolen car or there would have been no real tax incentives on this kind of car at any point in its history to have uh, made it a you know, a different top to a, an older frame or a newer frame to a newer top or anything in that um, sense. Um, this baby's been an old timer for quite a while, being from 1969, and there's uh, uh, would have been really no reason to try and hide or obfuscate or uh, outright lie about the origins of this car. But VIN number has to be where the VIN number has to be, and otherwise uh, our local road legal organization will not take any further look at it as for uh, making it electric and legal on the road. So, uh, that part being out of the way and our boat shows being over, we got to work and um, have some updates for you on making this baby electric. We had another little snafu on uh, our original puck that I showed you a few weeks ago. The puck um, is intended to then adapt to the flywheel, the clutch setup, and the whole thing slides into the uh, Borg Warner transmission, the T90 transmission that is in this CJ5. Well, everything fitted uh, rather well, even though it took us the better part of 20, 30 minutes of faffing last time to get it in there. Um, but we weren't really making good contact with the pressure plate uh, setup. Our clutch pedal had to go all the way down and it was already set to you know m uh, maximum leverage uh, before we even made contact with the pressure plate and thus we weren't really engaging the clutch at all. Well that meant everything had to come back apart and see what was going on, who had made some what measuring mistakes and uh, who was going to give what new part to whom. Um, the good part of that being that I was able to film a little piece in more detail showing what the actual adaptation is that we do to the Siemens motor to make this very um, compact, very robust uh, setup possible. Um, so let's take a look at that. Well, hey guys, today we're going to be putting our Siemens motor back into the CJ5 conversion. 
Um, before we do so, hopefully for the last time, I thought I'd do one quick walk around of how we've adapted these motors to make this really tight adapter plate uh, um, and pressure, um, pressure plate coupling possible. Uh, last time I gave you guys a quick overview of the new short adapter plate and using a puck that then puts the shaft of the motor onto a flywheel uh, and pressure, um, what do you call that, a clutch uh, setup, in, uh, <laughs> we call that in English. Um, but I didn't take off the puck and I didn't quite show you how the motor had been adapted to uh, fit this setup. So I figured once we have it all apart now, since we needed to have a, a, a new part made, a new puck made actually, um, that would be a good opportunity to show you what in fact we have done to these motors to make this very short, very strong uh, coupling possible. So I'll take you in close and uh, give you a quick look at how we have adapted the Siemens motors to fit this setup. So here you see the original Siemens motor. It has the spline shaft, uh, not involute but exvolute, <laughs> spline shaft that is uh, standard for both these Siemens motors and the UQM motor has the same uh, spline and uh, in the Ford Transit Connect these would hook right up to a Borg Warner uh, e-gear drive and in that way be set up for direct drive transmission. Now to use these motors in a, a wide range of uh, clutch setups for different gearboxes and to be able to uh, make conversions that way uh, we had to adapt this motor because in many of our conversions, very specifically the 818 conversion and also to a certain extent our CJ5 conversion, uh, we wouldn't be able to uh, fit the motor properly if we would just simply make an adapter that only rides on the uh, spline, then would come uh, um, the coupling to the um, flywheel and clutch setup. Uh, that would mean that in the end we have a very, very thick adapter plate need. Um, in many cases we just would not be able to fit it. The 818, it would mean uh, cutting into the uh, frame and uh, we're really not allowed to do that and have any hope of getting it road legal here in Europe. And for the CJ5, I'll show you a little later, it would mean that we uh, um, would extend into the area where the current um, steering setup is, so that would lead to a whole other nightmare of adapting that and possibly also having difficulty getting it road legal. And yeah, here you can see actually how close the steering gets to the mounting of the motor. Had we had a thicker adapter plate, we would have had to adjust the whole steering setup and thus making road legal testing more or less impossible. Better to be lucky than to be good, isn't it Jack? Anything that we've adapted, we have to show that um, if we change it from the original, that it then meets r new requirements instead of being able to lean onto historical requirements. So anyways, what was done to these motors to uh, make this uh, puck setup possible? Well, um, here we see the original, and it has the spine part sticking out, and here we have the adapted motor. So basically what was done to the motor is that the front end with the spline was simply cut off and then um, the front plate uh, was taken out. This is all done when the rotor is actually out of uh, the motor housing. So the front plate comes off, the accessory plate at the back is loosened, uh, the uh, total rotor can come out now, as for uh, adaptations to the front plate, um, uh, with a finger lathe, this front ring is uh, taken off, and uh, we can see it here on the original. So here's your front ring sitting around the rotor. On uh, the adapted, the front ring is off, exposing um, the sidewall of the rotor bearing and the housing that the bearing sits in. Now the seals are all still there and in place 
and of course we're having a motor uh, and bell housing of a transmission sitting over this so it's not like we're introducing uh, the motor to a lot of grime or anything like that. Uh, let's get this um, camera in a little closer so you can see properly what we're doing here. So the real trick after getting the um, spline off is that we then open up the rotor uh, to a certain specification that we have on file and this way um, it'll allow for the pilot bearing to sit here and adapt to different uh, um, sizes of uh, pilot ends to uh, transmission shafts. Uh, that way you can uh, actually offer support to the transmission shaft which is often needed uh, but you can also greatly reduce the depth of coupling that is needed and that way you really reduce the depth of adapter plate that is needed to get the whole thing together. Uh, we found that the reduction in thickness of adapter plate and coupler actually uh, translate to a lower cost of these two which offsets the higher cost of adapting the motor to this setup. Uh, in the end, um, it's really not as much about total cost saving, it's more about the strength and quality of the total connection, plus it's about getting the whole drivetrain into your vehicle of choice. Once again, uh, we wouldn't have gone this route if it uh, wasn't necessary, but for the 818 and the CJ5, this is the only way to play. So, once you have this set up, uh, what do we then use to um, mate to our flywheel well we use what here is called a puck and the puck is simply a ring of metal that is made to fit over the shaft of the Siemens and uh, then to adapt to a bolt pattern for a flywheel that you've specified now the puck isn't just a flat ring it in fact has a back end that will slide all the way over the shaft and can sit against uh, uh, the outer ring of the bearing which is also riding just in front of the bearing housing. Um, I was asked by Paolo Almeida of the Institute Engineeria de Lisboa if uh, uh, we weren't worried that the pressure from the clutch setup might actually push the puck back and made it ride against the motor face. Well, thankfully we're not because it has that back end and it won't be able to go in further and thus make the ring uh, go up against the motor plate. The problem we had was that um, some of our measurements were lost in translation as we were making the puck and the one that we ended up with in fact was not deep enough for us to uh, properly connect to the clutch setup. Uh, we were riding so much in front of it, in fact, that all of your clutch pedal was needed just to get in contact, and there was no pedal uh, swing left to uh, put any pressure on the clutch setup, thus making the whole setup basically useless. Well, we were able to uh, find out that uh, our measurements were good, they just hadn't been transmitted properly, and so we got a brand new puck which is wide enough to encompass the situation for the CJ5. Just as an example, this is the difference between the two. We were about a centimeter off on the first one, and now we're fine on number two. So the puck will slide over the rotor of the adapted Siemens. Uh, one extra detail is this big key that is put into the shaft of the Siemens and uh, we have an allowance here in the puck for it to slide over that and then we use a double um, we call that an imbus, uh, what do you call it, like an allen key, so a double nut to first one secure it and the second one to uh, uh, enforce the secured nut. Um, it's a very tight fit, so I'll just hand fit it over the front. If I can get it there.
no being the answer. <laughs> Let me just get a little rubber. Once she's on, she fits nicely. And she spins nicely. I'll give you a little side view. So this side view will show how closely she rides in front of the adapter plate as compared to what otherwise would be the minimum length of adapter. Once again, if you still have the spline, that means this would be the starting point of your uh, pilot of the transmission shaft, whereas now it can actually ride in the rotor back here and go in there. So we're winning, you know, a good two inch uh, um, of depth, which, you know, <laughs> I mean, Jack has often said you get uh, beat by one thirty-second of an inch. Well, two inches is an infinite amount of space when it comes to uh, putting a drivetrain in or just being able to forget about it. So that's the part of adapting the motor and the rotor and making the puck. And uh, we'll call Ray in and start putting together this whole system. And we'll end up with a pressure plate clutch setup like we have for the 818. And once we have that, we'll uh, put in the motor to the CJ5 and show you how that goes. Hope this made sense. So there you have it. Um, new puck installed. Raymond put the motor back in and she is in a snug as a bug in a rug. Uh, we hope she'll never have to come out again because uh, even though she comes in and out under the new battery frame quite well, it is uh, just a bit of work. And we've done it three times now. Three times is good enough for us, okay, guys? So she's staying in, and uh, we'll be fine with that. On the rest of the build, we have um, made new battery boxes. Uh, in the front, we'll be holding 40 CA100FI cells, and in the back, we'll be holding 56 CAFI cells, making a full complement of 96 cells, running at about 330 volts uh, nominal, giving more or less full power out of the DMOX setup, and uh, giving us about 30 kilowatt hours for this car. Now with these gigantic uh, rubber wheels that are made for you know sandboxing and uh, not so much for high-speed uh, highway driving, it's not like this is going to be some long-range monster. But 30 kilowatt hours should give us a nice day of fun um, if you're going to be uh, trying to race around the sandbox. And it should give you a decent range around town for what she will mostly be used for. Um, the boxes are uh, made out of stainless steel. The original restorer of this car had a bit of a fetish going on for stainless steel. He uh, raised the car up quite a bit using uh, stainless steel members. He um, used a lot of what we call tranplat plating all over the car, um, using stainless steel little hood fasteners all over the place. So we figured that uh, we would uh, stay in um, the same theme for this car with a lot of the materials we use. Added reason to this is that since this is the first car that we are having road legal tested by the Air Deve, and the Air Deve is really very iffy on the whole electric thing to begin with, um, the best thing is to uh, go slightly overboard on strength of anything mechanical or anything holding a lot of weight because uh, as soon as they have the slightest inkling that something is not manufactured or fastened properly, they're going to want all kinds of engineering tests and crumple tests and you know ridiculous tests just to uh, ensure and prove that everything is snug in there and won't start coming out with the first bump in the road. So we went slightly overboard and used three mil thickness of uh, 304 grade um, RVS, uh, Rusfrei style, stainless steel as we call it, 
and uh, are also going um, pretty heavy duty on the frame members and uh, fastening it to directly to the frame in the front and in the chassis in the back. The Art of A also wants you to um, deliver a schematic or drawing of how the battery boxes are made and fastened to the car. So Ray spent the better part of two days learning how to use SketchUp and doing some nice illustrations of how we made these boxes and how they're going to be mounted in the front and the back. And then we have to do a complete um, statement sheet, two-page statement sheet, saying how we put the battery back together, how we make sure that high volt is uh, isolated from the frame, and how one cannot simply either drop a tool or get one's fingers in the high volt area without using tools to actually dismantle the top of the box. So we have to uh, do a lot of those statements, and of course we've submitted our newly printed EMC report on the Siemens DMOC uh, drivetrain that we got from TUV Rheinland in Lake. All these things together uh, will mean that we can now go ahead and get the car road legal tested on the 27th of October. Big day for us. There is still quite a bit of work to be done on this car, but you know, if we had needed to, we could have finished her in about a week now. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that having a few extra weeks is going to be good, and uh, we'll get a lot of that extra form and fitment done and uh, make this a really pretty conversion. I think that's about it for us and the CJ5 update for this week. Um, I have all the batteries laid out there in the back, so I'll be merrily... Uh, discharging them and then uh, doing uh, Celso Manaya's patented bottom balancing technique. Uh, probably taking a bit longer <laughs> than if Celso was here. Celso, I need you to come over and help us out. We've got a lot of projects and uh, we could sure use you. Uh, I'll feed you. <laughs> well, we'll figure something out for the future. But for now, you can all rest assured that here in Amsterdam, we are building and I hope you guys are building too. I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.